G'day everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is James, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome if you're new. Today I thought I would show you something that I've had set up for a little bit. I haven't actually had the chance to go out and use yet. I mean, I've used it, but I've used it at home, which is kind of not the purpose of it. But anyway, I wanted to show it to you um, and I wanted to do a stream of consciousness journaling because I have this new journal, which I also picked up a while ago and I have not opened it yet, specifically for my stream of consciousness journaling. So I thought, you know what, let's just put this all together in a video. Just have a little chat, do a little bit of journaling and have a lovely afternoon together. So you may have seen this in my Insta stories or my Instagram or somewhere. This is the Sky Band be companion and it is a little travel it looks like a teeny tiny little luggage suitcase thing <laughs> it's like a little leather uh, satchel I like to call it my Luca bag because it looks like the little bag that he has in uh, that Luca has in Luca <laughs> the new Disney Pixar film which I love I've got my little Tina sparkle necklace on there as well just because I had it hanging up and I thought you know what I could put that here for a while until I get annoyed or until it falls off so um, it is a beautiful this one is in the brown the uh, Bambi brown Sky Bambi Stationery is the brand. It's actually embossed down here. Debossed? Embossed. One of those. Stamped in there <laughs> into the leather. Um, I got a few extras with this. This is something uh, I, I can't actually leave the information for it below. Um, I can leave the name of the bag, but the actual bag itself is quite tricky to get a hold of. I had to get on the... It's First of all, it's a private Instagram. Then I had to get on to... A post that was posted like on a Sunday at six o'clock in the morning my time and I had to be the first eight people to type reserve in the comments <laughs> when the post went up it was like a whole uh, like a whole bunch of hoops to go through to get it but um, and it's also very expensive I should just say that this was a treat to myself for a, uh, a wonderful few years of very dedicated hard work that I've put forward for my journaling, I thought, um, and also my 31st birthday. I thought it'd be a nice present for me. But um, I got the Sky Bambi Companion. I also got a few of the extras in here. So this is not everything as it comes in the standard bag. Uh, one of the things that you won't see in the video is the little travel uh, like carrier. It has like a pouch that it sits in. I have that. Um, I just take off one of the straps. It's got gorgeous like straps, this little leather tag. This is what it looks like when the little travel straps off it. This is the journal I'm going to get into today, the Midori MD notebook. This is a B6 Slim. I've never used this size before. At least I don't think I have. I'm pretty sure I never have. So I'm very excited to get into that. It looks super tiny. Um, here is the bag. I have recently set this up with a bunch of stuff. This kind of shuffles around a bit. Let me make sure I'm still in frame because I know that, Oh, well, maybe I'll put it this way so you can see that. Perfect. <laughs> Alright, so this is everything I've got in here. It came with two of the pen loops. These, these are like little magnetic um, pen loops. I'm trying to get things that are easy to get in and out. Um, it came with two of those and I bought an extra two. I actually didn't know that it came with two, so I bought two thinking I would get two, so now I've got four. It is what it is. <laughs> Still enjoy it. Um, and I had also purchased a bunch of cute little brass items for my birthday as well, so I got the Traveler's Company um, fountain pen in brass. I thought this would look really pretty with lots of brass stuff, so I've got my Traveler's Company clips in here. I've got my... Um, Oh, what's this called? Gekoso, the hand clip from Gekoso in Ginza, my Traveler's Company brass ruler. I've even got this old Mickey Mouse uh, tie clip. My mum got this for me when I was a teenager, uh, when I was going to Disneyland. Actually, no, I think maybe she got it when I worked at Tokyo Disneyland night my first year. Either way, it's just a, a lapel clip, like a tie. Not a lapel clip, a tie clip. <laughs> um, and I keep it in there, I don't know why. It's going to be one of my little page holders, I guess. I have my Visconti, my Van Gogh Visconti. Steve got me this for my Christmas present. Uh, I think it was the year before last, 2019. Uh, just some other stuff here. I've been enjoying these Uni Jetstream pens, the Edge 0.28. It's a ballpoint pen, but it's really, really fine. Um, so I have a couple of those. This is my Lamy Joy Safari. I also have this, which, oh goodness, I'm gonna forget the name of this one. I think it's a Kaweco. Um, I really don't know the name. My All my loops are still a little tight, but they'll loosen up over time. Maybe I could push it through the other way, that'll be better. Um, I just got, I think it's a Kaweco Lilliput. I also lotion my hands, that probably wasn't the best idea. 
<laughs> um, this is a brass ballpoint pen, which is actually really beautiful uh, to hold. It it's really nice and weighty. I got this off Jet Pens. I think it's called a Coeco Lilliput brass pen, and I did change it to Uni Jetstream ink in there. It came with a blue Coeco ink, but I actually didn't like it. I felt like it was kind of, um, it felt really cheap, like it would keep skipping, and even on the Jet Pens website, it looked like one of those cheap ballpoint pens, so really confused about that, but it's a nice brass body. Then I got a new pair of uh, Tim Holtz mini snips, the, the Tonic Studios ones. I love, love these scissors. I have them in all three sizes in the red here. And I use these all the time. I've had them for years and years and years. They have never given me issues. I get really angry if they leave the studio because <laughs> Steve tries to take them all the time. Really, really good scissors. So if you're ever looking for um, good scissors for fuzzy cutting. A pencil, uh, Tombow Mono Knock Eraser. I got a new one of those. This one actually has the, the lid in it, so that should be fun. A little ball, uh, mechanical pencil, another mechanical pencil. This is my hanko, my name stamp. It actually doesn't say my name. It says Yas <laughs> in Katakana. I got this in my trip to Japan and I just love it. I love having it around. Uh, so this, I lost the lid on my favorite sharpener I've had since I was a teenager. But so now the crumbs kind of fall out of it a little bit, but it's okay. I have a sharpener. I have this little stamp set. A Greenleaf and Blueberry Sketchers set of watercolour. This was just the most complete rainbow set I had handy. I might change this in the future uh, and make a specific set for this bag, but I do want something a bit versatile because this is supposed to be for travel, so uh, you kind of want all your options there. I have this in here for now. I don't know if I'll need to keep it in here, but a Tombow Mono Adhesive. And this, actually, there's nothing in this, but I keep it in here for now. This was a washi roll. This was extra. Oh, there's a Memento ink in there. So, got ink. It is a washi roll, so you're actually supposed to fill it with your washi tapes. But all of my favorite washi tapes are currently in use right now, so I don't want to pack them in there just to get them out uh, at a later date. I mean, I'm probably just going to fill it with Tokyo Disney washi tapes. What am I talking about? So, <laughs> we'll do that later. For now, it's just the ink. It's got two little loops in there. This was an optional add-on, which I just thought... You know, you go through all the trouble of actually getting the bag, and it it's already such an expense um, that, like, get it all, one, like, one and done. Because Steve was asking, like, you know, are you going to regret not getting any of the extra stuff? And I was like, no, I don't know, I can always get it later. And then I thought, no, I maybe could not get it later, <laughs> so get it now. So, um, yeah, this is optional, probably didn't need it, but I'm uh, happy that I have it. I got this uh, from a friend from Virtual Voyage 1, and I actually just added it to my little pencil case. This actually comes with it. A lot of this is very compartmental, so there's snaps. You can actually snap this in and out. And I got a tote bag that actually has snaps, like this little accordion wallet snaps out as well. Um, and the tote bag has two of these snaps in there and a loop on the side. So you can uh, change, you can pull stuff out, pull stuff in. So you actually don't need to have all of this in, it's very modular. Like all of these, these uh, magnetic, they come out. So I've kind of packed it full. This is my little pencil case, and then when you're not using little snap areas, they have these little leather tabs to go over the snaps, just so you can keep it looking all pretty. If you've not seen the Sky Bambi Instagram before, it's like stationary heaven. It just, the most aesthetically pleasing stationary <laughs> setups. Very much that. Very much not my brand, but I just, I once I saw this bag, I was like, I think I need it. I think I really need it, <laughs> so I made my way to get it, uh, and it was, it actually comes in black and green as well. First one, I, I was thought I was going to get a green, but then when I watched Luca, I thought, no, I really, 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 really want that little brown bag, so this is my Luca bag. Anyway, uh, Black Pal Rainbow Pencil, I don't know why I put that in there, but it's in there. Palomino Blackwing Water Brush, of course, Vermilion Prussian Blue, and a white gel pen. So those are just some extra little things to play with. Put that in there. And then this is a leather accordion wallet. Um, I don't know if you saw this, but recently I've been printing tons and tons of photos onto gloss sticker paper. And like photos from throughout my life, they don't even have to be recent. There's old photo shoots that Steve and I did, the old uh, Christmas tree ornament topper with Gran's embroidery on it. Just literally everything. I folded that, sorry, I need to put that in the other way. 
and I have all of these photos handy just for when I've got parts of writing like my five-year journal that maybe nothing happened during the day and I might want to just prompt myself with any of these old photos or any of these photos that I find inspirational. It's kind of like having my own little Pinterest board, but literal, like <laughs> the analog version of all of my favorite images just stashed in here. And they're printed on photo sticker paper, so I really don't need this tape runner. I could just peel the backing off, put them straight into my journal. But that is a little leather accordion, a uh, little ephemera pouch, which I think is really cute. All in all, I absolutely love it. Um, I'm not going to use it today, I just wanted to sh share it with you, and this is where my journal was stored, so I thought, kill two birds with one stone. Let's get to the journaling. Thank you for watching that. Maybe I will pull some things out of here. I don't know. You know I get very experimental with my... <laughs> um, with my stream of consciousness journaling. Let's put this back together. It does have this front pouch as well, so you can put your journal in there if you accidentally fill it too tight with uh, stuff in here. There's a lot of space in there. It's quite heavy. Sorry about that little um, cut in this thing. I don't know what I was saying. Steve called and I don't know why this stupid phone that I'm recording on is uh, connected to my phone all of a sudden. It didn't used to be, so something's happened there. Anyway, um, it cut me off, but I was just saying it, it's quite heavy. That's because there's a lot of compartments, a lot of layers, and a lot of those add-ons and extras in there. But to be honest, if that's all I was taking on a little trip, or even to go coffee, like go coffee downtown, uh, sit in the coffee store, it's more than I would need. Honestly, I've done travel journaling a bunch of times before. I always take more than I would need, and I usually take um, almost about that much and think, no, I need more, I need more, I need more. and I add so much, and I've never really used more than it's in that, uh, that pouch. So, you know, maybe I'll try and fill it with extra pencils and pens and stuff. Usually, like, novelty items. In fact, I could see myself adding maybe, like, a few dot markers or something. Just... Items of the moment that I'm really into because my mood changes with the season, so um, I'll keep myself open to adding that, but I think I've got all my core essentials in there, so, so I guess this is a good video to watch if you want to know what I really recommend as, like, my staples. <laughs> That's not everything, but it's, it's a lot. Um, I'm going to use this journal. I actually just found out. Steve's coming home from work, and I was planning on going to Zumba, so I'm going to open this right now, but I am going to leave you, and I'll come back at another point to do my stream of consciousness. <laughs> It's a shame I didn't start this earlier. I could have done one before Zumba, one after Zumba, and we could have taken a look at how my mind changes after some healthy workouts. But um, I'm just going to get this prepared, then I'll uh, I'll take a break. You won't take a break. This will just be in the next cut. Uh, but I'm going to go do Zumba, and then I'm going to come back and do this. Look how tiny this is. This is tiny! <laughs> Goodness, I better have not my well, I better not have much on my mind is what I was trying to get out because uh, yeah, I don't know how I'm gonna fit it all on here. It'd be a fun challenge. Look, at the end of the day, if I need to do multiple pages at a time, I really don't think it's gonna be a huge problem, is it? Uh, but this is gonna be my little stream of consciousness journal. I, with those stream of consciousnesses, sometimes I do add some stickers and some ephemera, but I would rarely do like tip-ins or kind of bulky, you know, adding cards or ephemera from the day, ticket stubs and stuff like that. It's usually more about my imagination and my brain and thoughts. So it's a lot more writing and drawing, illustrating, maybe even painting a little bit. So I don't think this should bulk up too much. There is a lot of pages in there, but um, I've used these books before, they're really, really pretty. This is just a blank, and like I said, B6 Slim, so should be good. I like to keep the wax paper on there, but I think I will get rid of this belly band. There we go. And I might just tape the wax paper on. I honestly don't know why I do this, but I just, I got in the habit of doing it because I've used these before. The first one I ever used was a white grid version, and I've got all A5s, all my other ones are A5s. And I used a white grid for an off-camera journal when I was in a really unhealthy pattern of only journaling and filming all the time, and I felt like I wasn't doing it, um, I wasn't making time for myself to do it off-camera and, you know, really explore my own passions and personal kind of interests. That's not true. I was exploring my personal interests. I just wasn't taking the time to devote to being off camera. So I made an off camera journal and I also did a whole year of like um, documenting in one before I had my five year Hobonichi. I started that. Yeah, I've done a bunch of these. I use one as a travel journal. So I do love these books. I do love the paper. It's kind of a cream 
uh, toned paper, so it should be nice. It's very smooth. Um, I will get back to this. We'll do a stream of consciousness together. I'll probably pop out into a voiceover, so this is the last you'll hear from me in real time. I'll uh, chat to you in a sec. All right, hello, g'day everyone. Welcome to the stream of consciousness part of this video. I, uh, when I was doing it, I had two pages and the right page is blank, so I intend on putting this photo, well, this video, kind of Harry Potter style, moving photo style <laughs> on that page. Um, I'll see if it works in the video, but I do have that thought in my head right now, so we'll see if that happens. Um, I had a good time doing it. The book is so small, I could not believe how much smaller it felt. I work in an A6 for my five-year journal and for my planner. I have both of them here. This is my uh, Hobonichi Techo Avec, and it is in the Mina Peronen Peace color. I hope I'm saying that properly. It's a tricky name. This is the Hobonichi Techo five-year, and it is in a red leather cover that I got from the Tobichi store. There's my cat, there's Oliver, cleaning himself on camera. Excuse me, do you need to be doing that? I just dropped Steve off at work, so it's it's morning time here. We're all just getting up and ready and started for the day. I have teenage acne that came out of nowhere. It's in my eye even. Can you see that? Well, I know where it came from. I just switched up my um I switched up my skincare routine like last week. I don't know why, but I hit 31 and I thought, you know what, I should start using a retinol, I should start doing this and that. Which I'm kind of thankful, I don't have any crow's feet or anything, like resting crow's feet, and I don't even have super deep wrinkles in my forehead. This is a huge accomplishment for me because if you know, I worked on cruise ships for years and years and years, so I should have aged like a leather handbag, but um, I'm thankful enough to have not done that. And I do attribute it to good skincare, even though I don't look like I have it right now. So uh, please excuse the spots everywhere. In my journaling, I actually did a whole bunch of spots with my uh, my dot marker, just to, just to signal signal? Signify that, I guess. Uh, the Stream of Consciousness, if you haven't seen one of these videos before, it's basically just a bit of a brain dump, but I like to approach it more art journaling style, so, um, and I, I say it's either, it's either a thought that I have that I, I illustrate or I write out, or it's a direction I feel like going in, or a, a feeling I feel like, like a, I have a motive to do something. A directive to do something. It's really hard to explain, but in essence, it's all just very intuitive and it's whatever is at the forefront of my brain. You might have caught earlier in the video, I said I was going to Zumba and then it would have been funny if I did it before and after. And that's so true because before I left, I had tons and tons and tons of thoughts and I was actually quite, I wouldn't say sad, but I was very pensive, which is akin to sad <laughs> for me sometimes. So I was really in this, um, yeah, I had, I actually had thoughts of things that I was ready to put down on the page. Went to Zumba, absolutely danced it out, and then came back and felt like my brain was almost empty. Like there was nothing in there kind of stewing. There was nothing, and look, obviously endorphins, the happy hormones of exercise. I know that that's, it was likely to shift my mindset because that's the benefit of going to do all the exercising. I don't typically do it for weight loss anymore. I've tried to switch how I think about losing weight and you know, being healthier. My mindset gets, if you see anything from my stream of consciousness journals, my mind can be a really hectic and crazy place. So it's, it's a bit of a job, like a full-time job to manage it. <laughs> I guess that's the human experience, isn't it? We've all got to manage our minds, but I, um, yeah, so the exercise really did kind of clear my head out. I came back and I did a bunch of stuff that was really just, just non, non thoughts. I even wrote at one point, I think, um, like not so many thoughts, just feelings. Cause I, I had a lot of feelings. Like I was feeling good. I was feeling really peaceful, really relaxed. It was kind of late at night. So I had a really good time doing it and I uh, hope you enjoy watching it come together. The book, yeah, I, like I said, was small, but small but manageable. I have noticed that lately, most of my journaling, I've, I've been downsizing a bit. Um, and by lately, I mean over the past couple of years. I actually started, I think, right back in the beginning, I started with a small dilutions journal. And then I quickly went to square and large. And I liked the large, but I, I felt a little intimidated by the large because there's so much space to fill. And I used to be an art journal that planned everything out and like specifically, intentionally, like down to the sizing of the font that I would print out certain, you know, certain quotes on. Like I would be really specific and measure everything out. Um, so it took a long, long time to get anything done in a large journal, just for the pure fact that there was more space to fret about. <laughs> and over the time I found that my Goldilocks size was A5, but A5 can still be quite substantial if you're doing something uh, daily. Like if I was doing a daily five-year journal, 
with A5. I think that's too big for me. That's why I chose the A6. Super manageable in A6. Uh, even a planner. I had that big sketch planner, which I actually loved because it was more of a... Um, like a glue book, you could kind of stash everything in there. I, anything that didn't have a home found a home in my sketch planner. Unfortunately, they discontinued it and they made, well, they didn't, sketch plan didn't discontinue. They discontinued that style. They made a new one, which was a folder and it was a ring bound system. And I gave it a really good go. I thought it would work for me uh, because I could still technically stash everything in there. The only problem was it was so small. Like the rings were so small, there wasn't a lot that I could fit in there. I think I could fit two to three months in there at a time before it just became too thick and especially putting all my stuff stuff in there. So, and then once I was finished, I would take all the pages out and I had to put them in another binder just to store them, which I didn't really love either. I'm just not a huge fan of rings, so I didn't love that. I ended up switching over at that point to my Traveler's Notebook, which I loved for a long time, but even then, smaller. Um, and then after that, I tried the Hobonichi, even smaller again. I hadn't worked in A6 before, but uh, I got my five year and then I got this and this is my new planner. And I've currently been through two of these. Is my hair? Sorry, I got so sidetracked. Um, <laughs> I just saw this bump out here and I was like, I didn't do that. <laughs> this, uh, I got two of these Avex already up on the shelf. Oh, there's one there, you can see it. There's one there and there's one there. Um, and those are not fully packed, like jam packed. They're pretty chunky, but I sometimes grab those and just still do drawings in there or like write my notes out in there, swatch something in there. Um, I actually love them, just having them around, these tiny little books. This is my new one. It's just started in July, so you can see it's not very chunky. Um, and yeah, I've had a couple of weeks off, really, basically on a pseudo little holiday, so that's why there's not really been much to plan either. I plan into the future. I've never really done a planning video on this, I don't think. Maybe I should do that one day. I'm not going to promise anything, but I'll say I might think about it. Anyway, so the, comparatively, like, I thought it would be kind of the same as using a um, an A6, because it's almost the same size. It's a touch, I would say it's a touch thinner, but maybe it's not. Yeah, it, it looks like it's a touch thinner. Is it? No, I don't think it is. I think it's the same width. Am I crazy? I'm going to measure this. Hang on. My little Muji ruler here. This says it's 10.5 width, and this... 10.5 width. It's the same. It's the same width. I'm confused, and this is why my brain is crazy. But I think a lot of people would think this. Because it says B6 slim, I perceive this to be a lot thinner than it is. But it's taller. Um, it's about... Uh, how would you say? What you, Like an inch taller? It's about an inch taller. Just over an inch. And I think uh, it really... Sorry about that jump cut. Um, anyway... All I was saying was the difference in sizing was this one's kind of shorter and fatter, this one's longer and thinner. This one is like, it's like the difference between US letter size paper and A4 size paper, or short and fat like me, tall and thin like my brother. <laughs> the James and Caleb of journals. Anyway, uh, really excited to keep playing and uh, do some more stream of consciousness, uh, even though it is really tiny, but I think it'll be fine. I can do multiple pages if I need to. I think I will skip every other page though because it does ghost. And I don't want to, uh, I forgot about that. I used to glue the backs of those pages together in my other journal. So uh, I don't know if I'll do that again. I think I'll just skip them because the gluing, it, it's hard. If I warped one page and the other page isn't warped, it kind of warps to it. I'll just leave it. But I will leave every uh, second spread blank so that those two back pages uh, could sandwich together their blank. Anyway, uh... I had one topic of conversation today. I'm going to keep it pretty brief, even though this topic has the potential to expand on like many, many, many tangents. Uh, I got a comment uh, that is not too dissimilar to conversations I've had in the past. Ooh, excuse me. Um, my coffee is repeating on me. <laughs> anyway, the comment that I got was about content and quantity of content, not quality. Um, although those do kind of go hand in hand sometimes, uh, people's opinions on those. Just the fact that, you know, this comment was just expressing that I create a lot of content and that there's a lot of it and how do you do that? Or like, is it sustainable? And, uh, you know, I've had these talks before. I don't think this was a specific question to be answered. In fact, I can't really remember the specific question. I just remembered, talk about quantity of content. <laughs> so that's where I'm coming from today. From my own personal experience, the quantity of content that I produce. And I will just say that, yes, from one person, uh, doing, owning their own business and, and producing this content. It can seem like a lot. It can certainly feel like a lot too. Um, I don't think there's an overabundance of it. I think it's quite natural 
considering the fact, uh, and this is where context is everything, right? Uh, I think people are a little bit more generous when they look at my content, maybe because we've had this parasocial relationship because I chat to you on YouTube, or uh, maybe you just feel a little bit more personally connected because it's my name on my on my Instagram or something. Um, but you're actually looking at a business, and this business is 100% my income, and it has been for five years now. So it's a full time job that I commit full time hours to, and I have a feeling that perhaps this uh, this sentiment comes from people who don't operate in this as a full-time job or don't spend full-time hours doing it because it would seem like a lot if you were comparing what you were committing to it to what I was doing to it. Um, I think anyone who is receiving the full-time benefits of doing you know, this very niche job of art journaling and content creation, if people were able to make full incomes from it, I do believe you'd see a lot of content because you do have to produce quite an amount of content to continue that flow of revenue, even if it's down to workshops. I mean, uh, in all reality, the, the income stream that I've had has diversified over the years, and it continues to be very diversified between products and uh, workshop experiences and affiliate revenue and even guest teaching spots, like education. <coughs> Pardon me. The, the way you go and make your money is going, you're going to have to produce content for it and usually you end up sharing it all and it usually has to repeat and go on a cycle, right? So I just, I don't know if there's anyone that is doing this full time that's not producing a lot of content. In fact, no, I, that's a lie, I do. I, well, they're not, how do I say this? They're producing content, they're just not sharing a lot of content. Um, I think there's a difference as well. I share lots. Do I share everything? No, not at all. I think it would actually kind of be a little too much to share everything. So if people think that I'm sharing too much, just just know that this is me a bit on reserve. <laughs> it could be worse. I think we've seen it be worse when I did those like five Inktobers at once that year. Um, you know, you know, I have the ability to push myself just out of curiosity and that's not always the healthiest thing to do. But I, yeah, I do have a capacity for it. I believe in efficiency. So I'm always looking for a quicker way to do something. I am really ruthless when I'm analytical. I will rip, to, I will rip apart my experiences. I'll rip, I'll rip apart Virtual Voyage. I will shred uh, Playtest Patreon. I will search every cavity of those experiences for something I could have done better or uh, been quicker at or been more efficient at, maximize efficiency. Um, and ultimately, I think if you're looking for the how to create more content, it really comes down to being very honest with yourself. I say this a lot, but it, it couldn't be better advice that I've ever received in my life. Be honest with yourself. It's, it's okay. You are who you are. You're made perfectly. Uh, in his image, that's what we believe as Christians. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that to you, even if you don't agree with me. Um, I'm just gonna say you are who you are, and it's okay if you're slower at some things and quicker at some things. You'll have your strengths, you'll have your weaknesses. We all do. Um, we do over time get better at stuff. We we can commit to learning things. I was a terrible teacher as a dance teacher. I had no patience for anyone. I couldn't really care less if people didn't want to do what I was doing. Um, as a teacher of dance, I don't think I was the best. Uh, over the past few years, though, I have really committed myself to growing my ability to teach and what I want students to experience and learn through my teaching, uh, the style of teacher that I want to be and the experience I want people to have. So there are things you can absolutely be intentional about growing. And if you're looking to create more content, there is ways to do it. Um, and there are benefits to it. The more content that's out there, the more people can consume, the more people might uh, be attached to you, the more people might become indirect customers of your brand. Uh, but all of that stuff, that comes from my business brain. On the passion side of it, which I think is where like a lot of these comments come from, I don't actually concern myself with quantity on the passion side of it. On the passion side of my art and journaling, I do it to feel good. So quantity isn't much of an issue. And to be honest, if I were only focused on that, it would become really hard to be successful at the business side of it. Because in my passion side of it, I can spend an hour just putting stickers in my journal. It's very meditative. It's very, I get in a trance-like flow state and I just keep putting stickers in. and. I mean, I'm almost like a zombie at that point. <laughs> it can be late at night and I just do it. It's like sticker therapy. So it can be um, it can be difficult to translate that into content people want to experience. So I do have to like amp it up a little bit, search my personal passion side for things that are a bit more interesting to show or things that I do enjoy, but maybe are a bit more valuable to teach. 
Um, and don't get me wrong, there's almost a lesson in everything, but uh, as far as quantity of content, uh, it would be overly generous of you to assume that <laughs> I would create this amount of content were it not directly tied to my income. And I don't know a more polite way to say that without being vulgar and just talking about money on the internet, but you know, it is what it is. I, I live a lifestyle that needs to be supported through income. I think many people watching this probably relate. I have expenses, I have bills, I have a family of cats and Steve, and uh, yeah, that's just a lifestyle that I've chosen and I would like to be able to fund. And so I do that by working. And I'm very lucky and very uh, blessed. I know, I know. <laughs> So cliche, um, but I am very blessed, and and it's I feel like I have to have a lot of um, gratitude for the fact that I get to do the job that supports all of that, and it gets it also allows me an opportunity to pack it in with a lot of the passion that I have. Yes, there are still parts of this job that I don't love. There's always going to be that, but I tell myself like if I'm not gonna risk losing my job over that, you know, with Disney Cruise Line or Royal Caribbean, why would I, why would I do that to myself? Like, at the end of the day, I'm the one that loses here if I turn up to work unmotivated and lazy. So I'm not going to do that to myself. Um, I do have a lot of grace for myself though, uh, but I think a lot of, if, if you're looking to grow in, in how much content you create, if you're looking to do more, I really do believe you have to be honest with yourself and be very discerning uh, through your experiences. Be willing to acknowledge what you do really well and maximize on that. Be willing to acknowledge what you're not that great at and be willing to fix it. Um, sometimes fixing doesn't mean becoming better at it. Sometimes fixing means letting it go. Sometimes there were things that I was doing because other people were doing them and I thought those were good things to be doing because other people made money off of it, which I realized wasn't for me. It wasn't the way I was going to make money off of it. Um, and then other times I thought that exact same thing, but I kept doing it anyway because there was a different benefit. YouTube, for example. I don't think anyone starts a YouTube channel and thinks, oh, I'm going to have a hundred followers and that's going to be amazing. And I'm definitely don't want to be a million subscribers on YouTube. <laughs> Everyone thinks they're going to blow up for some reason or like the algorithm might favor them, favor them for something. Uh, it's just not everyone's, you know, journey. So for me, I could have ditched YouTube at any point throughout the years and been completely justified from a business standpoint. I have a mission statement though, one that keeps me very grounded in why I think I have been led into doing a lot of what I'm doing as a job. And that mission statement really requires me, because it's literally in there, uh, to have accessible content. And this is the most accessible I can get. It's free for you to watch, it's free for me to upload, it is uh, whatever I want to put up here, like a two hour video if I want, I could be on here for live streams if we want. So this is accessible and this is the platform that I use that for, uh, to really engage with everybody uh, on a personal level where I get to chat. It's kind of harder to do that on Instagram unless you're on live, but um, in any case, that's just how I set that up. So yeah, I. it's all the same advice really. Discipline is great. You even have to be honest with yourself if you don't have a lot of discipline, because <laughs> that might have to change. Um, but yeah, I, I would say first and foremost, if you're not going to commit to this as a full-time job, please don't expect to be creating the amount of content you see full-time creators creating. There is a financial benefit to full-time creators like myself creating that amount of content. And it's just because the more we create, the more eyes are gonna see possibly what we have as revenue streams in the future. There's a very direct marketing kind of benefit to that. And then a very indirect benefit of the financial rewards somewhere in the future, whether it be from products or workshops or affiliates or opportunities from companies like sponsorships, random things like that. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, as someone that has was art journaling before I ever made a YouTube channel, I created much slower. I created a pace that was much more manageable for myself and you know I spent days on one singular spread and I never thought anything of it so uh, you know take it from me this is uh, this is not normal I don't think this is normal for anyone uh, unless you're a bit of an art journal fiend and you just enjoy doing it 24-7 um, and then I would Second that by saying that even if you are creating a lot of content, there is another pressure and there's a whole part of work to sharing it. 
it takes time to edit your photos and to get the captions together, to post them, to react to comments, to react back to uh, Instagram story messages. Like I have not been in my DMs for months. I'm so sorry to anyone that's DM'd me. I just don't even know if I can bring myself to do it anymore. <laughs> totally separate personal reason, but um, you know, it does. that's a whole part of the work as well. Uh, so it's not just about creating the content, it's also the sharing. And, and I think you'd be surprised. Some people don't share a lot, but they create a lot. Some people create a lot and share all of it, and you think, wow, they, they have such an extensive body of work, and you've literally seen it all. Some people create more than you could ever imagine and share a modest amount, and you might think, hmm, they go at their pace. It really does come down to uh, how each creator has decided to produce the content for you and produce the experience of how you interact with it. I like to share often because I like you to know that I'm constantly working. I'm constantly trying to grow my skills because it's important to me in my personal passion side of everything. I like to grow and I want you to see what I'm enjoying in the moment because it changes so often. And so I want you to know that right now I'm going through this phase. Jump on this phase with me if you're one of these crazy people that likes mermaid fashion people. <laughs> Let's do that for a couple of weeks because I'm about to jump off and do Disney Halloween for two weeks. Like I, I want you to know constantly where I'm at. Uh, which is why I don't like to pre-schedule too much content in the future. Just because I, I, this is what I do it for. Ultimately, this is how I started. I wanted to share with you what I was passionate about, what I was enjoying. And I wanted to share the joy of it with you. Not, uh, well, I can't say not. I've shared pretty much all of it with you. I definitely don't want to share too much of my personal, like, issues with you. <laughs> which can be wrapped up in journaling. I think there's always a temptation to go there a little bit, but um, yeah, for the most part, it's just, this is why I was doing it. And I, I hoped that it would have a benefit. I didn't even know what it would benefit. I certainly, uh, one thing I won't ever try to be is inspirational. It's a personal thing for me. I don't mind, obviously, anyone can do what they wanna do. I think for me, wanting to be inspirational is the biggest setup for disappointment ever. <laughs> and only because it's a really weird logic here, but if I wanted to be inspirational, I would have to calculate how I people, how I thought people would be inspired by what I did and uh, produce that. And then I would have to look for their response to see if they are inspired. Best case scenario, they are, and I can sigh of relief. Worst case scenario, they're not inspired and I feel like I failed at it. So it's just an unnecessary expectation. The reality is too, I've done things, but I've done videos before that I honestly thought like, should I even upload this? Like it's pretty standard, it's pretty random. And people have been inspired to do that more than something I spent like three days on, <laughs> really researched the topic and went and go and did full full tilt, went overboard with it. And no one really cared to, to do anything with that video. So I actually can't. I can't assume where people are going to be inspired from, so I shouldn't even make that a part of what I'm going to do. It's just a setup for failure at this point. So I just kind of put it all out there, let it be consumed, and then just am pleased with the response if it's happy, if it's positive, and if it's negative, I usually just chalk it up to, well, I've done my best, that was my job, so I'm gonna move forward from that. And uh, luckily it's just the internet and I can always log off if I need to, <laughs> but, yeah, I think if you're looking to create more content, first of all, know why, because that's really going to impact how motivated and disciplined you are to do it, I think. Uh, and then the how is, is pretty much just looking at your processes. Try and be more efficient in some things that you can be and more, uh, and more quick. You really, I learned this over time, but you really don't have to do as much as you think you need to. It is all well and good to take photos of like, say you've got a journal page and maybe it's not finished, maybe only this section is finished. Uh, it's all well and good just to take a photo of this section and put it on Instagram. It looks just as finished as anything else. <laughs> In fact, I did a whole TikTok little, uh, I did a few videos on TikTok, which were just journal details of my five-year journal, just looking at some of the pictures that I've drawn in there. Um, that is content. People perceive that it's like this video that I've taken time to do. It took about two minutes just to pick the song and then go through the journal details of it. And that's content that people like to experience because it may make someone want to do a little doodle in their journal today. And that is kind of what it's all about, right? We're all just here sharing what we enjoy. Um, and I think the real blessing is that we might have contributed to someone else's joy today and someone else's growth. So try not to look for too much more reward out of it. If you don't need to, if you're looking for a full-time <clears throat> income from it, I've got plenty more of advice to give you. We should sit down and have a chat. 
<clears throat> and uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna get a holes and deal with this throat for a second, but I just wanted to talk about that. The quantity of content, I think it's mostly people that are turning a profit off of it, so be a little uh, conscious of that when you're judging yourself against it, if you're not that type of person. Um, and just know that it's really not, it's not specifically related to success. Like I said, I've seen people that don't share a lot of content make a lot of money, so it's, it's really not uh, completely relevant. Um, it really comes down to marketing, I guess, if you're gonna call it one specific part of, of business. But at the same time, um, the actual creating of the content, I really hope is inspired by the passion that you have for it and not any other need to do it. There should be, um, and, and I hear this a lot, especially from creators, this kind of like obligation to do it. Uh, if, if you really don't feel like doing it, I don't know why you would need to unless you've already promised someone that you're going to do it or you're being paid to do it. Because yes, then those are times when you put your business brain on and you just sit there and you suck it up and you smile and you say, I'm going to do this job because I would like the money for it. So I'm going to do it and I'm happy that I can get the money for it. Um, and those to me, that used to feel like commission work for me. I didn't love to do commission work. Um, so s there you go. There's a bit of uh, advice there. Hopefully that helps. Um, yeah, we can have more topics of discussions in the future. If there's anything particularly pressing or any particular um, aspect of something you would like to know, we can talk about that. I feel it on my heart to share soon about like the whole 360 degree experience of a content creator and what they produce, what they actually let you see of themselves and what there is behind that veneer. Because uh, even if the veneer is 100% reality and true, um, it's still produced, it's still filtered for you. So um, it's been on my heart to share it, but honestly, I still feel a little vulnerable about sharing anything too personal. <laughs> so, um, and I still have a lot of wounds, you know, my policy, right? Share the scars, not the open wounds. So I, until I can heal some of that stuff, I don't know if I'm going to share that, but I did have it on my heart to share. I don't know if that's something that people think about, but... Um, you know, just the more we grow with social media, the more uh, observant I've become and the more I've been like pouring out my thoughts in these stream of consciousness journaling things, the more I realize that like I am being influenced by a lot of what I see and I have some very negative influences uh, within my social media that I probably should deal with, but uh, it's a bit of like, I'm having like a bit of that train wreck kind of feeling where I have to watch. I'm just fascinated by the psychology of it. Anyway, that's a talk for another time. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope you liked my little Luca bag and my stream of consciousness journaling. I will see you again another time soon. Thanks for watching everyone, bye. Start a band and reach for the sky. It's 2 a.m.